Hi friends, uh, this is a NPTEL course on risk-based engineering and uh, this is a second week uh, and this is fourth lecture uh, of on probabilistic approaches or methods in uh, risk analysis or, or reliability analysis. Um, we have discussed the point estimation. Um, uh, we have discussed how to come to arrive at particular, um, particular distribution um, how it is represented in the data and uh, now uh, the, a very a very important and uh, interesting uh, component of statistical estimation uh, is uh, evaluation of confidence bound. What is confidence bound? We normally have point estimates. Even in all our deterministic calculation, we'll say pressure will be this much, volume will be this much, one value. Uh, pressure will be so many kg per centimeter square, volume will be so many meter cube. But mathematically speaking, this statement may not be adequate and complete because there can be some minor variations uh, around the uh, estimate, uh, point estimate that we are giving. So, um, uh, so basically, um, this confidence bound is a very good uh, approach to, uh, to evaluate the uncertainty estimates uh, to, uh, to evaluate the uncertainty in the estimates. That means if I say the probability of failure is 0.3 yeah, and if I give an upper bound and lower bound to it, then probably the values are long lasting and then it, uh, it enables me to characterize uncertainty. So that means my statement should carry, ideally speaking, the point value as well as upper bound and lower bound of the estimates that might characterize or that uh, does characterize the uncertainty associated with the estimate. Um, and it is required uh, to handle day-to-day -day situation also because if we have done some, uh, some analysis, okay, and uh, today we gave some value, okay, let's say power failure, uh, power failure estimates uh, in a year. Now, uh, every year uh, this data is updated and every year the data is changing, either the power failure frequency is increasing or decreasing. Now, if I uh, give this estimate to my management, um, uh, along with the point estimate, if I give upper bound and lower bound also, it gives a better and uh, very clear picture that uh, power failure frequency, frequency can vary from lower bound to upper bound. How graphically it is to be conveyed, uh, I'll take in the next slide. Uh, but uh, uh, why this talk of uncertainty, confidence bound. Um, why? Because uh, finally, when we do some calculation, like say if I am estimating the, um, uh, the uh, risk from a particular uh, process industry uh, uh, in the eventuality of some failures or some scenario, then if I uh, characterize it with uncertainty bounds, uh, it will give a better, bigger and better picture to the, uh, to the management uh, key what are the consequences and which way we should take a decision whether the bounds are wider or the bounds are smaller or manageable uh, whatever so uh, let us say if we uh, and this uh, uh, this confidence bound form part of data uh, and data comes from uh, three major sources i would say generic sources let us say if we are uh, i am doing a probabilistic risk assessment then the data might come from generic source also that means existing international or national database on reliability. It could be uh, from plant operating experience. And third, it could be live testing uh, methods, uh, whatever live testing. Because these three uh, sources are extensively utilized in a PRA. Uh, why? The, the, it is not always possible to have all the data from the plant for simple reason. Sometimes there are new component and sometimes we do not have adequate operating experience. So generic data should be used actually, you know. And then for, for certain components, no information is available from generic source, no information is available from, from uh, upper plant operating source. So in that case, live test data is required at least to characterize, um, the, characterize the failure mode and mechanism as well as to get some idea about the life of the component uh, so that uh, we can integrate it into our uh, risk model, of course. And then the, the best advantage of our uh, uh, upper and lower bound estimation of uncertainty in this database is that uh, which, uh, which uh, is very, uh, very important 
and interesting also. Suppose if the uncertainty bounds are more or the uh, uh, confidence bounds are more or widespread, then once my analysis is complete, I can do a uh, sensitivity analysis uh, for this uncertainty to show that how much is the impact of this particular uncertainty or wider confidence bound on the net result of the uh, net result of my analysis and uh, then uh, job becomes easier uh, the component which are having more confidence bound for them perform the sensitivity analysis or uh, if, and if uh, situation requires then for this selected few components we can do live testing or many other methods to consolidate our uh, or to reduce our uncertainty in the estimates uh, it is recommended to the extent possible to the extent possible i'll repeat plant specific data should be used especially for safety system uh, the plant specific data should be used if you don't have data uh, gather more data or the least you can do is take the data from similar plant uh, and then remove the bias of that plant that is maintenance culture uh, or whatever it is whether maintenance culture is better in my plant and all so those factors we have to work out if the plant specific data is not adequate i had discussed in my previous slide the in last lecture that bayesian updating is used because as the your data becomes more and more uh, stronger your estimate will move your distribution will move towards plant specific data so uh, it is allowing me to use a very very elegant mechanism for update, updating the uh, frequency using plant uh, generic source and my own ex experience and giving me a realistic or rather not realistic it is giving more confidence in uh, my estimation okay so now if we th uh, having done this preliminary discussion uh, what is confidence bound just to get a clear idea this is this is a normal distribution okay and what normally we give uh, in our uh, analysis is the mean value we call point estimate of mean or whatever even if it is sigma it, we do give a point estimate now you see here if i if i characterize the upper bound of failure mean failure rate or uh, time to failure let us say and if i give a lower bound most of the situation they demand to give us uh, to give us the uh, the upper bound upper bound means what is the maximum stress level that will affect uh, my system or you know um, and minimum means this is the minimum criteria thickness is required something something so uh, upper bound and lower bound estimation and often the practical method is to uh, to estimate one bound only uh, either upper bound or lower bound whichever is required uh, and uh, go ahead for, for that analysis but there is there are some situations uh, where let's say diameter variation in diameters you know so there as we do do in quality control we we control the quality on both the sides so that type of things uh, requires for both lower and upper bound actually okay now uh, having done this representation then there are three major procedure in risk and reliability assessment for obtaining the confidence bound or uncertainty bound one bayesian analysis we have discussed last but uh, the practical example we'll take when we when we have a uh, uh, lecture on uh, pra modeling or system modeling then second is chi square distribution method okay uh, this is for continuous distribution and for for uh, uh, for discrete data the f distribution is there i am not discussing in this lecture the f distribution because for two reasons one is it is very simple and there is a parity with the uh, you know one uh, that is chi square thing how how to apply it and then it is a straight forward going to the table getting the value and estimating the upper bound and lower bound so it is much more simpler than what we do in the chi square distribution and all it is effective to uh, to use bayesian updating when the plant data is not sufficient i so i have said uh, chi square and weibull distribution are used for confidence bound uh, for live test data uh, reliability and risk and all is uh, good but live test provides solution to many situation particularly when we are looking for failure mode and failure mechanisms okay so for this chi square distribution is extensively uh, uh, you know weibull distribution is uh, extensively used you know and f distribution used for used for what where demand related uh, data is there how many uh, number of demands how many number of failures so this is how we can understand the uh, uh, confidence bound 
upper confidence bound and lower confidence bound. This is basically visualization of what we are going to see further. Now, um, when we have life test data, probably uh, life test data often forms part of risk and reliability studies because certain information can be extracted only from risk and reliability model. So type 1 test is where, where the testing is carried out for the predefined time. And whatever number of failures are uh, collected, that becomes part and parcel of the data. Type 2 test is, the test is terminated after a predetermined number of failures. Because the number of failures should be sufficient to get the uh, required, uh, required uh, confidence in the data. Further category of tests might involve with uh, replacement or without replacement. In fact, type 1 test, uh, uh, type 2 tests, they sometimes they are carried out with replacement, without replacement. Only difference in the formula for type 1 type 2 will change, otherwise philosophy uh, will remain same. The uh, life test and further confidence estimation becomes more relevant when we have new component. Uh, I think we have discussed it. Uh, and uh, design is modified. So for such cases, we have to have this life test being done. Life testing is also used to understand the competing failure mode and mechanisms. Life test plays a central role for physics of failure approach in reliability and prognostics and health management. The future world belongs to physics of failure because uh, when we have the uh, understanding of uh, uh, failure mechanisms and uh, that uh, get the, if that gets translated into uh, degradation mechanism and then we if we are able to uh, have sensors uh, which are monitoring at least critical components then prognostics and health management is the answer to um, all uh, industrial improvement and uh, things as such the uh, smaller version of uh, uh, prognostics and health management the condition monitoring is already being used in the industry uh, on a at least for uh, critical components where they would like to uh, take the maintenance before the failure event occurs okay but here in phm you have this uh, ai methods and all that so our estimations are more correct and there is a intelligence uh, component which is there which will warn you which will give you confidence key you can go for one week two week or you can shut down the plant or whatever or replacement has to be calls for immediate action so all those things will be handled by ai system very well uh, but with the, those things we'll discuss in a chapter on prognostics and health management as part of risk based engineering some stress factors are like you know when life testing is done of course there are accelerated life testings are done in accelerated condition it could be involved temperature it could involve uh, vibration it could involve humidity dust load anything which challenges system operation you know now uh, chi square is a very well established and very traditional approach uh, to estimate the confidence interval so uh, for the case of type 1 and type 2 test, the applicable degree of freedom. The degree of freedom is basically if, if in simple word, how many observations you are having and how many uh, minimum observations that you require to get the required confidence, you know. So 2n lambda divided by lambda bar is equal to 2 lambda t is an appro uh, you know, um, approximation that we use uh, for uh, applying chi-square me methods. Um, uh, for exponential distributions. The number of data points to provide estimate and, and this further enables the estimation to degree of freedom. Okay. The confidence interval can be estimated as follows. So this is, I am directly giving the model here. Uh, this is a two-sided confidence interval. Now, uh, there is a chi-square table. Uh, any book on probability and statistics will have at the end. Um, uh, what we have is, uh, we, what we have actually is, the time to failure uh, data and number of data points okay and then what significance level alpha we want so that means let us say if a significance level is uh, 0 0.5 0 0.5 so that means we are looking for a 90 percent confidence interval interval so chi square value uh, let us read like this probability of chi square value alpha by 2 significance 2.5 percent uh, okay uh, uh, and 2 n degree of freedom so lambda is more than that, that is, uh, that is a lower bound and the upper bound is chi square 1 minus alpha by 2 divided by 2t and this, is, this, is, this will give us the upper bound and this is going to equal to a 90% confidence interval that is 1 minus alpha. 
So, um, for 90% confidence interval, 5% will live on this. Uh, we are talking about uh, normal distribution. So, 5% will live on this side, 5% will live on the way we have visualized normal distribution. So, 1 minus alpha is equal to 90% uh, area is covered in that curve, which implies significance level of alpha is equal to 0.1 indicates. 0.1 is the probability that failure rate will not be subset of 90% confidence interval because we are giving information about tail end, okay, tail end of the distribution. After, uh, often the confidence intervals uh, given for, are given for one-sided. What we have discussed above is two-sided confidence interval, lower bound, upper bound. Here, we have upper bound only, okay. So, probability of alpha less than uh, upper bound, that is uh, chi-square 1 minus alpha. If we have two values, chi square 1 minus uh, 1 minus alpha and 2n you can straight go to the chi square table uh, have the significance level 1 minus alpha and 2n value degree of freedom and you will uh, you will get your data uh, by coordinate uh, making uh, the coordinate from uh, alpha to 2n uh, columns and row and then you'll you'll be able to get some estimate here and that estimate simply 2t divided by 2t and you will get the uh, upper bound or lower bound for those uh, data set okay now uh, uh, there is something called goodness of fit how your data fits again we have been uh, uh, talking about this term uh, in a different way uh, so goodness of fit is basically a hypothesis uh, test it requires a hypothesis test so uh, so far either we assumed a distribution based on type of data probability plotting shape parameter variable or alpha value for log normal distribution it gave in information about normal distribution of course uh, the first two were uh, approximate method that means type of data and probability plotting approximate compared to the last two but the fact is a component of judgment was there in each case even if the take the beta value, uh, there is a confidence because we don't have upper bound, lower bound on there. Sigma value, uh, it is a, uh, you can say, one step ahead, but not the exact solution. So, um, uh, this requires a further numerical analysis for uh, further confirming the more appropriate uh, uh, section of the distribution. This, this, for, uh, this further procedure is called goodness of fit, uh, fit test. Uh, this might involve a hypothesis testing and statistical analysis. Now, what is the hypothesis testing? Um, we have taken only theoretical component of uh, hypothesis testing. Uh, maybe in future, if the time permits, we will take some hypothetical example. But in, uh, the, in nutshell, it uh, rejects or accepts the null hypothesis or it rejects or accepts the uh, data coming from a specific direction by uh, H1 is called alternate hypothesis. So, Hypothesis provides an uh, approach to formulate criteria for uh, mean time to failure represented by common theta. Okay, uh, mean time to failure or any any value. The procedure involves formulation of null hypothesis H0 and alternate hypothesis H1 as follows. H0, if theta is equal to theta 0, that is when data comes from a specific distribution. And uh, H1, theta is not equal to theta 0 when the data does not come from a specific distribution. So that means from in first case it comes from the distribution and other case, H1 case it doesn't come from that distribu specific distribution. Now it involves evaluating the statistic uh, based uh, on the available observed data and estimates. Okay, The procedure always uh, involves comparison of how well it fits chi-square or uh, comma group. Uh, case we call case uh, uh, obtained from the table. If the statistics uh, so uh, obtained is less than the critical value obtained from the null hypothesis is accepted, uh, is accepted. Otherwise, the alternate hypothesis is accepted. That means uh, the data does not come from the distribution. Okay. So uh, the how chi square operates, you you have uh, the test statistics is uh, developed assuming approximation of chi square distribution to the data. Uh, both continuous as well as discrete data analysis can be done. Okay, so guidelines should be uh, should be followed. Chi square sample should be large uh, only uh, used for sensor data. Sensor data means you have, you have a cutoff at certain point. Uh, data segregation into non overlapping classes interval. There should not be any overlapping of one like one to eight 
9 to 15 these uh, this uh, uh, regions should be formed for applying chi square distribution there should not be any overlapping chi square test uh, strategy is formulated chi square is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to k where we are having k of uh, n observation observed value minus uh, estimated value divided by uh, e, e i and this gives us a chi square statistics where OI is observed value data and this is uh, estimated data, EI is uh, data and K is a number of class, E is equal to N into P, number N into probability, N is the sample size and P is the probability of failure given in the interval. Now you see this, uh, one example we have taken. So failure per year, we have X, you know. So these failures are zero failure, one failure, two failure, let us say class 4 power failure or let us say offset power failure you know, and then 2, 3, 4, that means the data has been organized in an ascending order. Observed frequency was 0 failure, zero failure 5, uh, and uh, total 27 years are there, uh, 27, 21 years are there, and uh, the observed frequency is 5, 10, 7, 2, uh, 0, 0, and then commission is 27. The expected frequency, what we did, what we estimated uh, uh, was, was this one, uh, 9.65, uh, 9.6 uh, this comes from a, a special table where we have uh, value ranging from 0 to 1 uh, from a graph and then you get the expected frequency of chi square table okay and, uh, and then your summation is 26.27 uh, uh, you can see both are very close uh, so what we have data is 21 power supply failure observed 27 expected 926.27 and the chi square statistics submission is 9.77. Let us proceed what, how we do. So uh, let us take the case of, you know, uh, for certain cases, even exponential distribution and Poisson distribution, they are sort of, uh, you know, can be treated uh, for some value um, uh, because, because here we call failure rate and here it is called uh, rho uh, in the Poisson distribution. So, the parameter rho is estimated here as rho is equal to n upon t. n, n was 21, t was 27. So we got the rho 0 0.78. Now for uh, random variable probability of x 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and all that estimation we have, uh, we have indicated, in the, uh, indicated in the table. Now the value of expected, uh, expected uh, uh, frequency is given by np where uh, where n is the total number of power failure and, and pi is the probability of estimate. So Poisson distribution. Now if I want to estimate from 0 to 6, what is the probability? Okay. So uh, the expected frequency column obtained np estimated uh, for all is uh, from 1 to 6. The chi-square uh, statistics is obtained in the last column. The summation is some, uh, 9.77 as we can see that. Um, 9.77 okay okay uh, and now uh, uh, our r value rejection value is uh, r should be more than r equal to chi square 1 minus alpha k min 1 k min values are the parameter of the distribution and here uh, what we have is k minus 1 or the degree of freedom uh, is the degree of freedom k is the number of classes 7 m is the number of parameter 1 and hence the degree of freedom, freedom is 5 okay um, uh, if the significance level is 10 percent uh, that is 0.1 uh, that is 1 minus alpha is 0 0.9 then for this if we get a uh, chi square value it is 9.23 so 9.23 is the chi square value so w is more than r okay so w was 9.77 and R is here 9.23. So the hypothesis is that the data follows the exponential distribution is rejected. So this is a built-in framework wherein we take a call on the decision. Okay. Okay. Now hypothesis testing. Our example we have seen. Uh, now uh, this is a very small case test we call common group uh, seminar test actually. And uh, here also it has got a high, uh, H0 is the hypothesis, uh, say, uh, only that value of dn, uh, which is nothing but maximum of d1 and d2, and d1 and d2 you can estimate from based on the data, it is given, uh, 
uh, and then finally uh, t bar you require a t bar also the t bar you can estimate then you can estimate s square so you have s value have the is acceptance criteria if d n is uh, less than the d critical accepted Hypoth null hypothesis if d n is more than d critical accept h1 okay the value d critical can be found by having sample size and all is almost similar uh, what we have in chi square method okay now overview of what we have what we have discussed we have discussed introduction and significance of interval uh, estimation or confidence interval estimation or uncertainty estimation if i call it uh, role of uh, confidence interval estimation different approaches applicability of distribution and we have discussed chi square goodness of field role of hypothesis confidence interval uh, for discrete distribution the f distribution is for homework i have not discussed it here um, i think all the uh, uh, all the uh, participants they have to work on this it's very simple uh, distribution something i leave for homework which are uh, which can be done and which where the question can be also answered thank you very much we'll meet in the next class bye